I am Christelle from Diabetes Strong and in this video we'll be talking about flying with diabetes. I know that flying with diabetes can cause a lot of anxiety when it comes to bringing along your supplies, bringing along your insulin and getting through TSA. So let's talk through it. Let's talk through how you do that without any issues. I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997 and I've traveled quite a bit here in the US when I worked in corporate America and I go back to Europe once in a while since I grew up there and I still have family there. And I've picked up quite a few tricks on how to fly with diabetes a little more smoothly. For my next trip, I'll be flying from California where I live to Florida. So I thought, why not bring you guys with me? So I'll be showing you what I bring along for a trip like that, how I ensure a smooth encounter with TSA, as well as how I manage my blood sugars while in the air. And I thought I'd also add a few tips and tricks on how to make flying a little less stressful. I manage my diabetes using insulin pens and a CGM. I use the Dexcom CGM. So I bring that along, I bring supplies along for that, as well as my meter. But let me just show you all the stuff that I'm packing for one week of travel. And this, guys, is what I bring with me for a week's travel. So this is extra insulin and it's my supplies. So you'll see I bring an extra long acting and an extra rapid acting insulin. So sometimes I'll bring two of each, um, but it depends on how much is left in the pens um, that I'm already using. And I just started a new one, so I only think I need an extra of each of them. Then I have my needles. I have a whole you know, little baggie of those. I always bring quite a few. I also bring syringes. The reason why I do that is in case of a pen failure, so I use a doable pen. So let's say that that fails or that that one fails for that matter. I can pull out some insulin using the syringes. Also have my Dexcom T6. There you go. It's an extra sensor. I have adhesive remover um, as well as alcohol swap. So I use adhesive remover to actually get the old sensor off. Then we have my extra test strips. I bring a whole 50 of those. I have my glucagon. So this is Baximi, Baximi, Baximi glucagon. I don't know why they choose so hard names, but that is a nasal glucagon. And my husband asked me to bring that one. I also have a pre-mixed one in a syringe, but since he'll be the one giving it to me if I need it, he asked me to bring that one. Okay, then we have glucose tabs. This is important stuff. I often hear about people, you know, being in a hotel without any fast acting glucose and having a low, that will not happen if you bring a whole glass. So I do that. I also bring some fruit, fruit leathers. That's just to have these, I think they're 12 grams of carbs. Let's look at them. Ooh, it's 12 grams of carbs. Yes. So this is just to have some carbs with me just if need. So that's all my supplies. Lastly, I bring, this is important. This is a letter from my endo. So you can see it's been, it's been with me for a few trips. But this is a letter from my endo saying, hey, Christelle lives with diabetes. She needs all this stuff. I've never been asked to show it, but I still bring it just in case. And this, again, all this stuff is a week's supply. I transport my insulin in a Frio cooling case. And the cool thing about the Frio case is there's actually no ice packs involved. So I've never had an issue with TSA. So Frio is... It's just like these little beads that gel and that then cools to make sure that your insulin doesn't get too hot. Um, I actually did a whole video on that and how that works. So if you're curious and want to learn more, I'll leave a link to that up here so you can check that out. And when it comes to your insulin, always pack it in your carry-on. Never, ever put it in your check bag. The reason for that is if you put it in your check bag, it might be exposed to too high or too low temperatures. And if that happens, your insulin can actually go bad. When it comes to your supplies, a lot of them can actually go in your checked luggage. However, you want to bring along enough that you have a supply that lasts you for, let's say, up to a week should the airline lose your luggage. I usually try and just bring all of it with me in my carry-on, but if I'm going for a really long time, I've limited space, I might put some of it in my checked luggage. I do pack my insulin and my supplies so that I can easily get to them in my carry-on because I do take them out of the bag and put them in the tray so they can go through the x-ray machine once I get to the TSA. If you do bring a lot of supplies and insulin with you, there's a trick to that. So you're allowed one medical bag, so that's an additional item and no extra charge on most of the US carriers. That means you can bring along your regular carry-on items as well as the medical bag. 
I haven't felt like I needed the separate bag. As you can see, I don't really bring a lot of stuff, but I know quite a few people who do. And it's something to keep in mind, especially for the longer trips, and I think it can be really beneficial for a lot of people. Now let's get through TSA. And I know there's always a question, can you bring your insulin pump? Can you bring your CGM through the metal detectors and the scanners? So let's talk about that. I wear a Dexcom CGM and I usually just walk through the metal detector or the scanner, whatever is open, and I've never had an issue. The TSA agents will usually ask me to touch the sensor. I often wear it on my arms. So I'll touch the sensor, then they'll swipe my hands and they'll run a test. I think they're testing for bomb residue or something like that. But that's it, and then they'll always let me go. I have now gone through security twice. First time on the way out in Los Angeles airport and now in Miami airport on my way back. And there, there was no issues as usual. So I am currently wearing my Dexcom on my leg. And what I do is when I get there um, to the checkpoint is I put all my diabetes supplies, my insulin in the little tray, let that go through the x-ray, and then I go through the scanner. And usually what they'll ask me about, and they did this in Los Angeles airport, is to touch the sensor. Given I'm wearing it on my leg, I'm not gonna take off my pants. So she just told me to touch it through my pants, um, and then they swipe my hands. And here on the way back in Miami, Again, I went through the scanner. I told her I'm wearing a medical device on my legs. She's like, okay, fine, I let me through. So as usual, not an issue. However, if you go to any of the CGM manufacturers' websites, you'll see that they say, yes, you can take your CGM through the metal detector, but they do not recommend that you take it through the scanner. So they do not recommend that you do what I do. So if you go specifically to Dexcom's website, you'll see that what they're saying is that they do not recommend that you take it through the scanner, because it's never been tested. So it's not that they know that the scanner will mess up the sensor, they simply haven't done any tests. If you don't wanna risk it, don't sweat it. You can always ask for full body pack down. That is your right. If you ask for that, you don't have to go through the scanners. I would say if you choose to go that route, just budget a little bit more time to get through security. I do not wear an insulin pump, so I don't really have to worry about that component of things, but if you do, you have to decide whether or not you want to opt for a pat down or not. I did look up the guidelines from the three major pump manufacturers here in the US, and this is what I found. Tandem and Medtronic had the same guidelines. They say that you can wear your insulin pump through the metal detector, but they do not recommend that you wear it through the scanner or send it through the x-ray machine. If you wear the Omnipot system, that's a little different. So the, both the pots as well as your PDM can go through the scanners as well as through the x-rays. So that's a little different from the other pumps. But regardless, if you offer a pat down or not, you should still not send your pump, unless it's an Omnipot, or your CGM through the x-ray machine. Did you know that as a person living with diabetes, you're actually legible for pre-boarding? It's another of those tips that I never take an advantage of, but it's just because I've never really felt like I needed it. However, if the boarding process makes you really nervous, if you tend to go low during the boarding process, or you just want to make sure that you get all your supplies with you on the plane and up in that overhead compartment, you should definitely go for pre-boarding. It is your right. Now that we're on the plane, there are a few things to be aware of. First thing is when you're seated for a longer period of time, you most likely become more insulin resistant. So that means that you might see your blood sugar start to creep upwards, or you might need more insulin for meals and snacks. careful with doing insulin corrections before you land because once you get off that plane you have to walk through the airport and that insulin might get hypercharged which can lead to low blood sugar. I as a rule of thumb generally don't do a lot of the large corrections up to an hour an hour and a half before I land. Whenever flying I usually try to get up and walk around the cabin a little bit if it's allowed of course I'll usually book an aisle seat if I can so I can easily come up and move around. Another trick I have is to bring along a resistant band so like this one so the reason for that is if I'm seated for a long period of time, I can still do a little bit of exercises. If you put your foot in this and like move your foot forward, kick forward without hitting the person in front of you, 
Um, you kind of get the blood pumping and it can help with that insulin resistance. Another big thing to be aware of, and it doesn't matter if you use an insulin pump or an insulin pen, is that when we fly, there are changes in air pressure and that does impact our devices. For example, if you use an insulin pen like I do, if you leave the needle on there before takeoff, or even if you just have to use the pen during your flight, you will see that the air pressure will impact the pen. So if you have the needle on there, you might see a little bit of insulin dripping out as the pressure changes in the pen, as well as more air bubbles forming in the pen. Not to worry though, you might miss out on a few drops of insulin, but the most important thing is to remember when you then use your pen, click it and do a few air shots. You wanna make sure that you're actually injecting insulin and not just the extra air that has accumulated in the pen. Insulin pumps is a slightly different deal since you're hooked up to the pump. According to Medtronic's website, the change in air pressure can lead to air bubbles forming in your tubing and in your, in your pump. And unfortunately that can lead to unintentional insulin delivery. To mitigate this, some of the insulin manufacturers do recommend that you disconnect before takeoff as well as before landing, but you'll have to check in with your insulin pump manufacturer to hear their exact guidelines for the exact pump that you're wearing. And then there's Omnipod. Since Omnipod is a patch pump, you can't just disconnect before takeoff and before landing. Um, so let me just read to you what they have on their website. The atmospheric pressure in an airplane cabin can change during flight, which may affect the pot's insulin delivery. Check your blood glucose frequently while flying. If needed, follow your healthcare provider's treatment instructions. And that is how I manage flying with diabetes, as well as some tips and tricks that hopefully can help make the whole experience a little less stressful. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more from me, please click the subscribe button and follow the Diabetes Strong channel. I also appreciate any interactions such as likes or comments. Thank you so much for watching.